let's do our first example for a free body diagram for a rigid body. Now we're going to do many, many more of these free body diagrams. So we're going to start out with a pretty simple one right now. Now what we want to do, all we're going to do is draw the free body diagram and then we're going to explain what each of the forces is. Now let's see what we've got here. So let's look. This right here is going to be a roller. All right, so we've got a roller here. This is a pin. All right, and let's go ahead. I just noticed I left off uh, quite a bit of stuff here on this diagram. Let's put a force here. So let's put 390 pounds. All right, and let's, that'll be good enough. We'll leave it at that. Okay, so let's figure out what this thing can do. Now first, remember the pin. Let's think about what the pin does. The pin keeps this bar here. It's going to be fixed in place right here. Okay, it can't move from that location. It's pinned there. Can't move. But we can rotate back and forth about the axis that comes through this pin. All right, so we can have rotation which means that this roller we could move you know up and down this way on this incline so that's kind of the situation that we've got now let's go ahead and draw the diagram you want to draw the diagram and you want to pick out the part of the body that has all the forces on it so that's going to be this shape Right, and now you need to label your forces. The easiest one we've got is this applied force right here, the 390 pounds. That's just some external force that's being applied, so let's put that on there. And then now you have to look at the supports. Okay, so our supports, we've got a pin here. Now, again, think about the motion that the pin allows or doesn't allow. Like we said, the pin keeps this thing fixed in place, but it can rotate back and forth. If it's fixed in place, it's not allowing translation. So that means it's going to create forces to prevent that translation. So I'm going to call this BY. Let's just call this point B. So that's BY, and then it's also got an X component. So let's just call that BX. So these two forces prevent any sort of translation at this point B. All right. Now it allows rotation about point B, so we do not need to add a couple moment here, like we had with the fixed support. All right, so just these two forces. Now over here, let's look at this one. So here we've got the roller. The roller is in contact with this wedge-shaped body, and it's resting on top of there. Now, if you think about it, let's draw the roller here. Think about the direction the force needs to be in. If this thing had its choice, it would push down this way, this object here with the roller. It's trying to push down this way. Well, this surface is trying to prevent that translation, so it's going to push upward. So this is like the normal force that you have seen before. So let's call that NA, if this is point A. Okay, so that's going to be the only force that you get there. So you get that force that's perpendicular to the surface, and we get that because this roller is resting on that surface. Okay. Now you might be wondering about this point here where the roller is attached, and we're going to cover this more when we get to frames and machines, but just so you see why. We've got the roller here, and then it's pinned to this thing right here. So if you think about it, they're pinned together, so that's going to prevent any sort of translation. So the pin has a force here. For the two forces here with the roller, 
but then on the part where it's connected to this member here, it's got equal and opposite forces. So those all counteract each other. Okay. We're going to cover this more in a later chapter, so if this doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. I just, in case you were wondering if we needed to analyze that connection point there, we do not, because all the forces are going to cancel each other out. And we'll explain that more later on. Okay, but that's why we don't, we're not worrying about these. So that would be our diagram for this one. We're going to ignore the weight for this one. We'll add that in later on. Okay, so here let's write out what these forces are. Na, that's just our normal force of the plane on the roller. And then we've got these two forces here, so Bx and By, those are forces due to the pin. And again, you can't always tell what direction they're going to need to be in, so just assume a direction. I usually think it's easiest just to assume the positive direction. And then when you solve for these forces, if you get a negative number, that means you picked the wrong direction. Okay, so if you always assume the same direction, it makes it a lot simpler, I think. And you'll see that more as we go through the problems. Okay, so let's stop this one here, and we'll do a lot more of these examples with the free body diagrams as we go into the next section when we talk about equilibrium equations. See you then.